The Isaiah Factor Uncensored starts right now. And welcome to The Factor on Sin. So tonight we are starting with the deadbeat ass mom we just showed you. Horrible person. We just really should not show her, but we have to because she has been arrested. Good thing. 23-year-old Taya Posley of Florida is charged with abuse for slapping her one-year-old child multiple times on video. She was arrested after that video was posted on social media. We're going to show it to you twice since it's so fast, but be warned, it's extremely difficult to watch. Post right? Your daddy wanna post right? He wanna fucking post and I answer the goddamn phone! I hate your post right? Your daddy wanna post right? He wanna fucking post and I answer the goddamn phone! I hate your what she is doing is slapping that baby in the face with her hand. Tonight, our panel tries to get to the bottom of this evil ass mom. You know, when I saw it originally, I wanted to say, is this real? Like, did this really happen? But after watching the video and doing a little bit more research on my own, it, the only thing that stands out to me is the level of stress that she's experiencing as a parent not she said one key thing was he don't he don't want to answer the phone but he's posting that shows to me that there's a lack of social systems of support for her now that doesn't justify child abuse in any way yeah i was uh, waiting now, on you to say that yeah yeah i wanted to lead in with it for sure but i want to talk about the behavior of the mother most importantly but the why i'm big on trying to figure out why would someone be so reactive in that way and a child, what did the child do that could have been so bad that would have sparked her, you know, to say, I hate you. When I saw that, the mind-body connectivity to show an action or an emotion so harsh, that was a lot. So watching that was very tough coming from a clinical standpoint and even an individual that worked with kids in foster care, knowing, you know, the challenges that they experience and the reason why they're there, it, it, that was tough to watch. Armando, let's hear from you about this. Your thoughts of watching that video of that woman strike that child, not once, not twice, but on social media and had the nerve to post it at, as if people would agree with her. Honestly, I think that they need to slap <laughs> They need to slip the, slap the <laughs> and also to make sure when she goes to jail, she needs to, they need to slap the <laughs> her like that whenever she's in her bunk bed at 5 a.m. or whatever time they wake up. Because if anything, that's a, that's a child. Mm -hmm. You know, that's somebody that can't defend themselves. And I feel so bad for the child. So, like, there's no excuses for what just happened, especially to hit the child that hard. You don't know if you might not only cause just trauma, but emotionally, but also the emotional, the physical, all those, all those, all those feelings are gathered together, and it's it, the child's not going to be the same. Even if from zero to five years old, that's where 76, 76 to eighty percent of children learn what they know in life, and that's one of the things that, that I feel bad is that that child's going to go through that. But yeah, she needs to get the slapped out of her straight up. Dr. Ruth, let's hear from you on this topic. You know, it's disturbing. Uh, I'm sure CPS or whatever form of child protection services they have there will get involved. Do you think at this point she needs counseling? She should lose temporary custody of this child? Your thoughts on the whole big picture here? Yeah, absolutely. I uh, agree with everything that uh, has been said almost. <laughs> uh, certainly there needs to be a separation uh, for a time between this young woman and this child. Looking at this, I am concerned about how she processes uh, being enraged, how she uh, processes her emotions and her anger. I'm concerned about her age. I'm concerned about her not really talking, striking this child, but trying to strike the man who she was trying to reach. And, uh, and, and so we really need to, to look at that. And this can be a lesson for a lot of people, especially a lot of women. You can't go around having these children and thinking that you're gonna be able to uh, continue to have a relationship with a man and he's gonna do what you want just because you have a child. 
it does not work that way. And so that, that's a lesson right there. And then we also need, uh, we need some parenting classes. I want to talk to her. I'm not, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, uh, in all due respect, from my standpoint, I would like to talk to her. I would like to counsel her and see, you know, where are you? Do you understand the, 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 the breath of what you just did and, and what could happen to this baby and really what could happen to you? So we really have to take a look at that. Uh, I, have, I have some more to say about it, but I don't, I don't want to go too long. Uh, but we really need to think about how we discipline our children as a people. This is not about discipline. It wasn't about discipline the child, but we have something embedded in our people about how we whip, beat, discipline children. It's called a whooping. And that was implanted in a, it's a, it's a vestige of a Slavic uh, culture that was, was put into us. And we got to learn how to get out of that. All right, Todd, let's hear from you on this topic. I, I thank God that she posted it to social media. I know people are wondering why in the world would she post that to social media, but what might have happened if she did not? Would they have taken the child, would they have taken her into custody? Would we have known how bad it was? I know a lot of people say that she's been doing this for a year, but the police said that they initially went there and they saw no bruises. You know, so they went on about their day. It was about the video that brought the police back and arrested her. And like the article, an article in foxnews.com said, uh, one of the people they quoted said, social media does a lot of damage. It's, it divides us, but it does get it right sometimes. When you videotape people's crimes and their, and, and, and their mistakes, like that, that needs to be out there. So I thank God for that. But like Dr. Allison said, um, the whoopings have been a part of our culture for years. I don't have kids. So a lot of people say you do your best parenting before you have children, but that was always, it was done to me. So I'm going to do it to the next person. Or oh, it worked for me. So I'm going to do it to my kids. But like one friend of mine said, did it really work for you? I mean, what issues do you have from those whippings that you don't know about that you're holding on to? So a lot of times we do need to go back to the way we were raised, everything that every way we were raised was not necessarily right. So Dr. Allison got it perfectly on the, the head on the nail on the head. We have to go back and think, are we really helping these kids? Because what could a kid like somebody said, what could a kid have done at one years old to deserve that? What could a kid done at five, 10? I mean, I, did, I got whippings, but I never got slapped and punched and stuff like that. It was right. a, a reason you got a belt and you never did it again. A one year old can't do nothing but cry or they're hungry or they're they use the restroom on themselves, that does not warrant a beating. A child is a child, even they're one years old. They, they don't know where they're, whether they're going or coming, like my mother would say, they don't know where they're at, they don't know who's who. So we need to, like Dr. Allison said, she needs counseling, but also thought this might be harsh on me. I also thought about all the women that I know that were not able to have children. And I think about a woman who's, who has a child and God bless you and you're not recognizing the blessing. You know what I mean? That's a blessing. There's a lot of people who want to be parents that are not parents. And if you don't, if you don't want to the responsibility, give that child to the father, give that child to the grandparents, give that child to the aunt or uncle or perfect stranger. Because I know people close to me that were adopted because their mothers couldn't have kids and we loved them like they were one of us. So there's always going to be options. I know that's difficult for a mother to give her child up, but I don't think she's ready for that. Like I said, I'm not a parent, so I can't judge her like other people can judge her on this panel, but they well, I mean, you, you have common sense, Todd. I yeah, mean, it's yeah, clear. yeah. You don't have yeah. to have a child to know what yeah. she did is flat yeah. dead wrong. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, man, there's thank God for the social media. So hopefully that this this woman can get the help that she needs. Hopefully the baby can be protected and know that the baby is loved and he can go on, he or she can go on to have a, a productive life. But it's I, I can only watch one or two strikes, Isaiah. I promise you I turned off the clip because that was enough for me. just a horrible situation. Now this conversation is bringing up lots of different layers and one that we'll discuss after the break is whether social media is influencing behavior like this. We'll be right back. Stay with us here on The Factor. And welcome back to The Factor on Sensor. We are talking about a disgusting Florida mother arrested after a video was posted on social media of her slapping her one-year-old baby multiple times. In the video, she's heard expressing her anger at the child's father. Let's wrap up the conversation with social media. Does it bring out the worst in people, or would this mom have done this anyway? 
that behavior was already happening. That behind the scenes, what was that? social media did us a great justice, that baby a great justice in this situation. But that behavior, what I saw, um, she's been um, abusing that child that way. In addition, I'll say something in, you know, Dr. Olson, she did have a point with saying about um, understanding childhood and how we were raised and things like that. But we have to work to um, unlearn that learned behavior right. that we've experienced for such a, you know, such a very long time. And looking at that, I wouldn't be surprised if that's how she was, you know, treated as a child coming up. That's likely, more that, than likely. Absolutely. So with that being stated, she didn't see anything wrong in that. However, my biggest challenge and the biggest thing that I keep focusing on is the psychological, the long-term psychological impact that this is going to have on that child. The, yes. the, the, you know, inability to create long lasting relationships and the fear of abandonment that that child will have. I, I just can't get past that thought for me. So social media, whether it's social media, whether it's, you know, this is, as I stated, behavior that she's been adapting to for a very long time. It needs to stop. Let me say this. I'm a, uh, I know the little proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. It's become cliche. But I was a professor at TSU in Lone Star. And um, one of my bosses would always say, if you see a, a, an adult, young adult having problems coming in late all the time, talk to them, see what they're going through. You never know. You might just look at that person or they're just late. My point is, it's going to take all of us sometimes to love on these kids. You know what I mean? They might not get the love. And I might, some of us might take that for granted because of how we were raised or how we raised our children. But some people don't get that. So when we see something, we need to, like they say, say something. We need to let that yeah. child know that they're loved, even if they don't get it at home. Because sometimes it does, you, a lot of things that I learned and that made me the man I am, I learned outside of the house. And I had great parents. Mm -hmm. But other people would see me doing something wrong or see me going through something like, Todd, holler at me. You know what I mean? What's, what's up? Things I couldn't talk to my parents about. They would, you know, show love to me. So that's what I think when I see children like this. All of us, yeah, we need to criticize this woman. She needs to do whatever time the judge gives her. She needs to be punished. But if we see children victimized by that, I know we don't like to get in other people's business, but sometimes we need to play father, play mother to a child, let them know that, hey, your mother is this way, your father's this way, but you don't have to be that way. You can be, be like a damn if, Karen. If I can say this, yeah, yeah, let me, exactly. let me say this time. too, that and we wrap all it up do for us, have Dr. children. We're running out of time. Okay, we all do have children. These are all our children. Mm -hmm. And I have had to get with parents in stores when they were misusing, mis, mis, mistreating children, you know, pinching them, threatening them. I have spoken up for that. And I'm going to say that we all need to step up and be adults and take care of our children. Absolutely. See something, say something. Thank you all for joining us here on The Factor Uncensored. And of course, if Dr. Ruth has to get with you, you're in trouble.